guys, it's comments time. Uh, Jose says, I either look like I got a lot of sun or I just chugged an entire bottle of tequila. I assure you, it's the sun. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you're going to put on a racing helmet and a neck brace, remember to reapply your sunscreen afterwards, especially if you're gonna spend three hours driving in a car with no roof, because otherwise you will look like this and ah, it's about the color of that plane and it stings. So, without further ado, let's get to your comments. Um, on the Boscam 5.8 gigahertz antenna daily, uh, Robert Veach says, please show us a close up of the SMA connector. Customers are asking, what is the difference between RP SMA and SMA? Hey, good thinking, man. All right, so SMA is this little guy on the left, and there's a skinny little pin right in the center of the connector that conducts things, and then this little guy is RP SMA for reverse polarity, and as you see, the little pin in the middle is a socket instead of a pin. So SMA, RP SMA. There you go. So Robert, man, thank you. That was a good one, uh, good comment. People, we're trying to help you out. Let's get it. Uh, I did something really wrong, I don't know. Okay, <laughs> so this is what happens when you install your differential in reverse. God damn it. It's in my leg. It's for all the money, don't do that. <laughs> Alright, so uh, I actually had a lot of fun flying the Bixler right there. It survived, still alive. And some people made some comments on that. Uh, Rick Head says, Jose, that's me. You did great practicing with the Bixler. Just remember, it's better to walk a thousand feet to pick up your plane in one piece than it is to walk one foot and pick up a thousand pieces of your plane. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, and then we have, oh, people have had really nice comments on the little short film I made. That made is quite special. That little film is special for me because uh, it actually got me this job. Um, and you people have liked it, so thank you. Uh, there's been a lot of comments on the radio. Well, I'm not gonna talk about that, whatever. Mm, okay, so official citation. So Stuart, you need to take a freaking nap. You look like you haven't slept in days. <laughs> He does. It's very, very hot up here on the mountain. And on my little short film, somebody said, all new from Hobby King, our products will run away from you and make you chase them for a few miles to get them back. <laughs> Did not think of that when I was making it. <laughs> uh, but that's cute, thank you. Mm, that's, I don't have anything else to say. Funny wind. Really funny wind. So guys, I'm going to launch the Dynamic S here for a minute and fly it around a bit before I try the DH88. Uh, I know this plane very well and I don't know the conditions here very well and the wind's blowing in a funny direction so I really don't even know if it's going to be great conditions for sloping in general. So I'm going to fly this guy for a bit first and see how it goes before we test the DH-88. Okay. Whoa. So that was
was pretty fun and exciting as always with the dynamic S, but unfortunately, the wind is blowing from completely the wrong direction for me to even try flying the DH-88 right now. I would just end in a giant red pile of disappointing foam. So we're going to come back uh, you know, tomorrow or the next time we we'll keep an eye on the wind and we'll just keep trying until uh, conditions are what they need to be. Get that thing in the air. All right guys, so uh, keep a lookout for next week. We're gonna have pretty much, I think, it's a boat week, mostly. Uh, we're gonna do the Iran 2, that boat that Byron was talking about. I ordered it, should be very fast. And then we have two little boats and we have outboard boats. It's gonna be fun. From the comments video, week six, user Benjamin Feinstein says, put skinnier tires on the jet car and re reduce the ground resistance even further. Uh, good call, Benjamin. I am actually going to uh, take this thing and put uh, skate wheels, skate wheels, rollerblade type skate wheels on it uh, to make it as little resistance as possible. And I may even get around to 3D printing a custom chassis for this thing that's flat on the bottom and has very little suspension and takes a bunch of weight out. So we're gonna try a bunch of those things. See if we can make this thing go even faster. Uh, again, on the comments video, week six, uh, user RC Jet Fighters writes, Hey guys, just like to say thank you for all the work that you've done for this hobby and making it affordable. You're very welcome. And love your work, guys. Keep it up. Jose, don't give up. You'll get there eventually. Sincerely, Nick. Thanks, Nick. We're going to keep uh, plugging away, getting Jose in the sky uh, until he's flying really well. So thanks a lot for that. So I know that you are uh, always saying that you hate me and my job is awesome. Well, today you are correct. I am here with the Rattlesnake Electric Motorsport, Rattlesnake Electric Sports racing carts. These things are super, super cool. You have never been in anything this fast. I absolutely guarantee it. Um, just amazing. You guys can check out, I'm going to go for a ride. You guys check out the GoPro footage uh, and then we'll talk a bit more about this. Car. fun you can have with your clothes on forget about it you can't do anything better you need one of these the history behind this a little bit these things started out the reason uh, I'm talking about this at all the first generation of these carts that were running last year the fastest carts had nanotech hobby king packs in them uh, this year sort of to meet some requirements and some other things they switched it up and now running zero motorcycles drivetrains packs and batteries I can't say enough about these things guys you got to try this Ah, user tank 4 c on the parallel charge board adapter says, uh, once again, no warning from HK on the possible dangers of charging in parallel. You must ensure that your batteries, uh, you only charge batteries with the same cell number and at similar levels of charge. It's okay to plug batteries in together if they're within about 0.1 volt of one another, but not if there's a significant difference because current will rush from one battery to the other at a rate that they're not happy to take. So you can plug up the six packs in in parallel like this, but do remember, even if your parallel board is completely disconnected from your charger, 
check your battery voltages before you plug them in. If there's a difference between battery voltages, even without this plugged in, current will flow from one battery to the other. It's very dangerous. You are absolutely correct, Tank. You, uh, that's a really good thing to say. Um, when you're using a parallel charge board as a parallel charge board, um, each battery that you plug in should be within 0.1 cell of each other and they should be of the same type. Failure to do so can cause serious, serious problems because the battery will, at, at the absolute maximum rate that it can possibly deliver, shove full current from one cell to another if they're not close to the same balance. Very dangerous. So thank you for that. And for that tank, you are this week's winner because I'm trying to get some information out and I thought that was a really, really helpful thing to explain. Now another quick use for these parallel charge boards, I hate those squid charge things where you have, you know, a ton of live connectors hanging out that you don't need. Um, in this case, what I like to do is cut and make individual adapters for each battery type that I'm gonna use and plug them into the parallel charge adapter. That way, instead of a parallel charge adapter, it's just an all-purpose adapter and you can always have what you need to plug in. So that's my little approach to that. So thanks a lot.